Welcome to Rapid Rev. Today, we will talk about the future of electricity grids, otherwise known as the Grid 2.0. Mostly, we'll talk about how the grid will change, the challenges associated with that change, and which company has the best solution and opportunity to revolutionize this market. To understand how the grid will change, we have to know how it works right now. The ultimate purpose of the grid is to supply exactly how much power is needed at any given time. We will come back to this at a later point, so keep it in mind. The conventional power grid can be viewed as kind of a top-down system. Power is generated at a central power plant. It's then shipped hundreds of miles over high voltage transmission lines and eventually dispersed from substations to homes and businesses. The central power plant, which is typically a coal, petroleum, natural gas, or nuclear powered plant, would generate three phase AC power because this AC power can be transmitted long distances without losing a lot of energy. However, something recently changed. Renewables, such as wind and solar power, showed up on the scene. And while they create fantastic clean energy, they don't produce energy around the clock. This is a concept called intermittent generation. Additionally, some people are even installing solar panels on their homes, causing a distribution of energy resources, or DERS, DERS, which really messes with the central nature of the old power grid. And lastly, electrical communication technology has opened up real-time communication between devices that use energy and the ones that produce it. This information paired with machine learning and AI will allow energy to be managed way more comprehensively. These have been some revolutionary developments. Not too long ago, Elon Musk even claimed that the entire U.S. power demand could be produced by a 100 mile by 100 mile solar farm. And while this exact scenario is unlikely to happen, the future of the grid will be radically different. But a few challenges have to be solved first. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please drop a like and subscribe to support the channel. So back to it. Remember, the power grid must supply exactly how much power is needed at any given time. With this in mind, intermittent renewable generation, insufficient interconnectivity, and distributed energy sources need to be leveraged to supply power 24-7, 365. The challenge of renewable energy generation can be solved in two ways. Firstly, when renewable energy is produced, say on a sunny afternoon, more than enough can be produced. Storing some of this energy for later, using say batteries, pumped hydro, hydrogen electrolysis, or a few other options, can enable more renewable energy use and more favorable economics. Some of these energy storage companies include Tesla, Ecogen Power, Avalon Batteries, and others. However, we'll touch on a long-term energy storage in a future video. Now I said renewable energy generation could be solved in two ways, and this is where interconnectivity comes in. Interconnectivity allows renewable energy, really any energy, to be transmitted where it's needed most. For example, sunny Texas energy can be sent to the north during blizzards. And while the US is currently composed of three grids, they only have a few connections between them. So in the future, the US will need to build a more interconnected grid to leverage this power. Europe has started building an interconnected grid and check out Real Engineering's video in the description to learn a little bit more about it. And China is also pushing forward with a supergrid to utilize more of their renewable energy assets and decrease their dependence on coal power plants. With renewable energy generation and interconnectivity out of the way, let's bring in the real wrecking ball to the old power grid, distributed energy resources. In old grids, the consumers, homes, and businesses only consumed powers, but now, they're starting to produce it too. And not only do they produce it, but they wanna sell it back into the grid as well. Enabling the energy consumers to sell energy back into the grid is currently a regulatory mess, but likely in the future, the grid will have layers. When I say layers, imagine one layer as a housing subdivision with a bunch of homes with solar panel roofs. The subdivision can sell its excess energy back to the city, which is another layer. The city can then sell any excess energy back to a region or a state, which would be another layer. Eventually, all the power producers would adjust and energy would be supplied 24-7, 365. As you can imagine, managing this very complex and distributed flow of energy will be quite the challenge. And this is where I really want to talk about companies. 
There are some companies like Autogrid, Centrica, and Embala that are developing software packages to act as virtual power plants to sell and move around energy. However, the company I think has the best position is Tesla. I think they have the best opportunity because they are attacking it from both angles. They are building utility grade battery storage like they did at the Australian Hornsdale Power Reserve, and they are building home solar roofs and battery packs. The flow of energy to and from these resources can be managed by Tesla's AutoBidder software, allowing them to manage both utilities and distributed energy resources. When, not if, Tesla can enable their massive virtual power plant of solar roofs and power walls, they will dominate. Because Tesla is an electric car manufacturer, they understand the physics behind batteries, how to prolong their life and maximize their energy storage. Not only that, they have some of the best software engineers in the world designing their full self-driving system for their electric cars, a system that uses data from millions of cars and machine learning together. When they apply millions of solar roofs and power walls that come online, their machine learning expertise will allow them to develop the best software package for managing all of these energy assets. According to an electric article, their machine learning expertise will allow them to deliver price forecasting, load forecasting, generation forecasting, dispatch optimization, and smart bidding. Ultimately, Tesla's auto bidder software could become the quote, quote, operating system of the energy grid. They probably won't be the only one, but they will likely be the biggest. So to wrap it all up, the advantages of the smart grid will be cleaner, cheaper energy production and a better resilience to blackouts. Furthermore, energy will be produced with less CO2 pollution, which should improve the air quality. The only concern will be a lower relative percentage of power plants that can produce a lot of energy at any given time of day, but only time will tell if this will really be a problem. Thank you so much for watching this Rapid Red production. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also, leave a comment. Do you think Tesla will dominate both utility energy and home solar energy? Who could be their biggest competitors? Do you think batteries are gonna dominate long-term energy storage or will other technologies dominate instead? If so, which ones? If you have any other ideas for videos, feel free to drop those as well. Also, please check out the Discord. In the Discord, we love to talk about different technologies. We've been talking about all sorts of different rockets, fuel cells, different types of batteries, rocket tank manufacturing methods, all sorts of different things. So please join if you want to discuss technology and also have some memes you want to share. Also, feel free to check out the Twitter and the Instagram in the description as well. And if you really enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel even more, please check out the Patreon page. There's a whole bunch of different tiers, so it should make it accessible for anyone to donate if they're looking to. In any case, thank you so much for watching this Rapid Red video and have a fantastic day.